Welcome everybody, it's Jay Bear from Convince and Convert, joined today by a very special guest, my friend Mark Smickless from Intersection Consulting in lovely Vancouver, Canada, and author of the new book, The Power of Infographics. How are you, Mark? I'm great, Jay. How are you? Fantastic. I just finished the book uh, a couple of days ago, and it is really excellent. I'm very, very proud of, uh, of your effort on this, uh, on this Tob. It's a, a very useful book. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was the goal, uh, to, try to, uh, to try to create something that um, you know, most business people will get some value out of. Yeah, I mean, even in our business, we get asked about infographics uh, a lot more now than we did uh, even a year ago. And, and now I can just say, well, let me send you a copy of this book by Mark. And awesome. all of your questions <laughs> will be answered. I need to buy like 50 of these and just redistribute them. Perfect. Well, that's, uh, I'd encourage that. Thank you. <laughs> I will make that happen. Um, so you are a marketing uh, consultant uh, with an emphasis on the, on the digital side. Uh, but you also have been creating infographics for, for quite a few years now, and some of your work is really spectacular. We'll link to some of it here in the, in the blog post that we write around the video. How did you get into this? I mean, you're not really a graphic designer by background, as I understand it. How did you become sort of infographic man? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a designer, and that's something I sort of stressed in the book. Um, there's infographics shouldn't be intimidating to the point where you know it's not art necessarily it's it's a communication medium and I'm trying to encourage people to uh, that aren't maybe designers or don't have an art background to to sort of embrace this this medium and, and try to use it for me I've always been a visual learner so it's something that uh, you know I've, I've always just sort of seen ideas and pictures and my inspiration actually came from uh, David Armano um, from Logic and Emotion, who's with Edelman now. Um, I saw some of his work and it just sort of resonated with me and I, I sort of had this idea when I started blogging, I was writing for about six months. So I started the blog, I guess, about three and a half years ago. And I found, I enjoy writing, but I enjoy creating the visuals a lot more. So if I'm going to invest three or four hours in a post, I'd rather do it um, with the visual. So I just, you know, I'm using a Microsoft publisher, which is you know, most graphic designers would laugh at that, right? Yeah. That just proves that I'm not a designer because I'm using a Microsoft product. <laughs> so, um, you know, just sort of creating using, you know, the bathroom people and just uh, real basic sort of imagery and, um, you know, using sort of uh, available clip art and various things from, you know, places like the Noun Project and stuff like that and just putting stuff together and, you know, it's evolved a little bit and, um, you know, I appreciate the, the kudos on... Uh, on the infographics because I'm definitely not a designer but um, you know my goal is to basically just try to communicate ideas and it's it's something that's helped me build my business and my brand so I just wanted to share you know how how I started getting into that and, and, and some of the process and stuff. Yeah, You mentioned that you're a, a visual learner and one of the things that you talked about in the book that surprised me is that 65% of us are are visual learners. Do you think that's the the um, so an impetus behind infographics and their popularity. I think a lot of us. I think yeah. There's. I think we have to be a little bit careful there because there's a lot of people that aren't visual learners that don't necessarily connect to that medium. But I think it's more the hardwiring. Uh, you know, from the research I did, we're just sort of we're preconditioned to process information visually more so than. Uh, you know, than auditory, etc. So just the way our, the brain science, the way we're actually hardwired is really conducive to processing visual information quickly. So that's part of it. Um, and then there's, you know, there's so many other things that have helped it explode in the last year, you know, especially with social media. It's just such a shareable form of content. So, but I think, you know, primarily the, the actual brain science, I think is one of the biggest reasons that it, it tends to really work. You also talked about in the book um, the, the notion of um, you know shareability, but also sort of skimmability, right? That that you know Jakob Nielsen and other people have researched that nobody really reads online anyway. This idea that they're going to actually read your long blog post um, is is mostly a fallacy, which breaks my heart because I typically write longer posts, but uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, and and that an infographic is by definition uh, skimmable and scan scannable. I mean that's the whole idea, and so it sort of fits into how people actually consume information now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, you're right. It is sort of sad that, you know, we're 
consuming less and less in a lot of ways online. I mean, we're, we're it basically in, in some instances it's sort of come down to looking at basically a headline and deciding whether you're even going to read something based on that headline because yeah. you know we all fill our readers you know if we're subscribing to hundreds of blogs um, you know it's physically impossible to read all that stuff so infographics definitely break that um, you know it sort of crosses that bridge for people to you know be able to more easily consume that content um, one of the biggest things too around those types of infographics is you could you can create something, and this is sort of the trick, I guess, and the, the challenge is to create an infographic that you sort of get a, a synopsis of the idea by just looking at it in, you know, whatever, five, ten seconds, but then maybe also having the opportunity to dig into it a little bit deeper. Uh, so there's, you know, that's sort of the challenge of infographics now, and, you know, what you'll see is these long, um, you know, skyscraper type infographics that in a lot of ways... Uh, you know, it's pushing us towards a thousand word blog post. Some of those things aren't consumable either, right? Yeah. So I think you have to sort of strike a balance between, you know, making it, uh, you know, visually appealing, easy to consume, but also relevant and adds a bit of value as far as information goes. Yeah, I would say certainly the ones that, that you produce and the ones that Armano produces probably are more historically similar to what we, what we used to see in newspapers, right? Where you actually would have yeah. Uh, you know, a, a graphical display of, of a single piece of data or a data point um, or, or, or a concept. Uh, and you're right. What I start to see now is is here's a very, very, very long infographic that that is essentially a website in pictures, you know, and and, and I'm not sure that that is is getting us closer to to the ultimate um, win. Yeah, well, I mean, infographics are very similar to to writing in a lot of ways. If, if you're going to put you know, sometimes you have so many great ideas and you want to share them all in one post, right? Same with an infographic. If you have too many ideas, you know, eventually you're going to have to scroll down for five minutes to see the whole infographic, and that sort of defeats the purpose, right? Yeah. So I would encourage people to, to break stuff up, you know, just like you would do a series of blog posts. You know, if you have three or four really solid ideas, you know, turn those into a series of infographics. Um, yeah, my style is, you know, I mean, it's a little bit different. I, I, I use that sort of eight and a half by 11 mentality where if someone was to want to print this thing out, um, they should be able to. And yeah. I don't know how many people still print stuff offline, but <laughs> if they do, you know, so you want to have that nice sort of, you know, it fits on a screen. That's my goal. I mean, and, you know, I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I've done, I've done a couple of the sort of long format ones as well. Um, but I would try to encourage people to sort of, uh, you know, to con condense the idea and try to display it in a sort of more usable area on the screen and, and, and for print. I think one of the other challenges that we're seeing now in, in this explosive infographic era is, is, is the data sources are either not very good or are lots and lots of different data sources kind of mashed up into, into one infographic. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, well, and the data, the data is always an issue. Um, you know, you have to be really careful to check your sources. And, you know, this is where the data visualization piece, you know, I mean, you, you pretty much have to be a bit of a researcher. I mean, you have to go through your due diligence, just like you're citing stuff when you're, when you're writing. Um, you have to make sure, you have to dig into the data because a lot of times now you'll have one report that comes out and you'll have 20 blog posts written about that one report. And sometimes it's, uh, it, it's so many um, steps removed. You know, if you can try to find that original link and skim through that data and see, you know, how legitimate it is, what organizations sort of created it, yeah. uh, and make sure you cite that, obviously, in any infographic if you're going to do a data visualization. Yeah, a lot of times what I see now is that the, at the bottom of the infographic, sort of a long list of, of different asterisks and, and different sources, but it doesn't necessarily say that this graphic is, is from this source. It's just a list of overall sources. And uh, that's a little dubious, I think, from a, from a research methodology perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And, there's, uh, and there is a bit of science there, you know, as far as, uh, especially on the data stuff. And, you know, the stuff that I work on more is more sort of concepts and ideas. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the, you know, if you're going to get into the numbers, I mean, you have to be careful to, to represent stuff um, you know, true to form, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you think, uh, let me put it this way, what do you think is behind 
the huge increase in infographics today? Is it that it is inherently uh, a good way to communicate or is it that is inherently shareable and good for SEO? Um, I think the latter is the reason why it's taken off. I mean, yeah. I think people see it as another way to market stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's the impetus. Um, and so be it, right? And that, that works, absolutely. I mean, I look at it as more a way to communicate. Obviously, there is huge marketing benefit. There's SEO. It's sort of trendy now too, so people sort of have, you know, they've, they've caught the wave. Um, so just like anything else, they sort of, you know, sometimes they don't really even think about it. And that's one of the issues too is, you know, just like anything that you're going to do when it comes to communication, you have to look at, you know, why am I doing this? What's the purpose? Sometimes it's just like, well, everybody else is doing this, so, you know what, we've got to crank out an infographic. And I get a lot of that. I get people just in conversation saying, yeah, yeah, you know, we need to create some infographics because everybody else is, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, we need to do it too. But I look at it as a really viable method of communication. That's how I sort of, that's what sort of resonated with me. Um, when I just, when I see a picture, it just, it makes more sense to me as a learner. So I've actually incorporated a lot of stuff you see uh, online, a lot of my stuff. I use that in, in client documents, right? I'll use it in reports. I'll use it in presentations. And I find it, A, it breaks the ice. Um, it helps people. You know, we just take it for granted that, you know, because we're in the social media industry, that everybody understands all the terms and really gets it, right? Yeah. And that's not necessarily the case. You know, even at the C-suite level, you know, a lot of people still have some challenges understanding the ideas. And I find infographics really help convey some of the real basic stuff as well as, you know, getting into details uh, and showing some big picture thinking around digital and social, right? Yeah, interesting idea to, to use them in a professional services capacity to sort of demonstrate mastery of concepts. Uh, I don't see that very much on the agency side. It's a, it's a good idea for sure. You talked about um, in the book a section on, on infographic resumes and more and more people sort of doing that visual resume kind of thing. Um, do you think that's going to take off? That's going to be sort of the resume of the future? I think the challenge is... I think they're really cool because they make people stand out. But you know, one of the things, and some of the people I spoke uh, spoke with around uh, doing the research for the book, was organizationally we're not quite ready yet. So you have an, or or an organization from a hiring, doesn't quite from know. A hiring HR perspective, you mean? Yeah, yeah. We don't know how to process a resume like that. Like yeah. something like that comes to somebody, no, like, it might be so foreign. They're gonna yeah. like they they might actually toss it. It might yeah. do the opposite. So you know. From what I understand and in and, and my experience and, and the people that I spoke with, I think you have to look at it as an, in, a, in an individual basis. So if you're applying for a design job or you are applying to an organization that is going to be a little bit more funky and open and cutting edge, it might be in a traditional sector, yeah. but if the actual culture of the organization is different, then something like that might work. If you're, you know... Applying to Bank of America or Royal Bank up here in Canada, right. I don't think they're going to be able to process that, right? Maybe, maybe not the best <laughs> so, choice. Yeah, you have to look at it, I think, individually and, and really gauge you know what you're trying to accomplish with that. But it is an emerging thing. I mean, there's, there's quite a few platforms out there that help you create uh, you know, your own sort of infographic resume. Um, yeah, so it's definitely something worth checking out, but a little caution for sure. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's the kind of thing, back to the professional services side, um, that you have available on your site for key people in your company, but you're, but it's not necessarily the resume that you would give to a potential employer. Yeah, but that's another great idea too. So if you have, you know, we're, we're all trying to develop our personal brands online, you know, you can easily attach something like that to your LinkedIn profile, yeah. or if you have a personal website, you can have that, you know, as a complement to, to some of the more, you know, sort of text-based stuff that would, a, a traditional resume would contain. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned it uh, a little bit earlier, touched on it, and let's elaborate on it a little bit. This idea of having some sort of objective in mind before you commit to creating an infographic, and you talked about using smart goals uh, around infographics. Can you elaborate on that a little bit and, and talk about why people need to have some sort of game plan for this? Yeah, well, I mean, I think just like anything else, you want to, 
you have to be able to measure in the end whether something is successful. Now, we, we all know that a, a lot of organizations aren't quite there when it comes to measuring, never mind social media, but even traditional marketing. You know, there's a lot of legacy programs out there that people just, they have the budget, so they spend it. They don't really measure whether it's working right. or not. Right. Um, you know, so just as, you know, I think it's just a good, it makes good business sense to sort of, to be able to measure something at the end. So in order to do that, you sort of need to set that objective at the beginning. So whether that's, and it doesn't have to be in a formal document. I mean, you could write it on a napkin, on a piece of paper, but you should have some idea whether that's something as simple as creating awareness. If that's the case, then, you know, what kind of awareness metrics are there out there that we can measure? Jot those down, put some sort of reasonable goals in place, and then figure out a way that you're going to be able to measure that. Yes. And you could do that both, you know, externally for marketing and SEO purposes. That would be the easiest way. Um, but also internally, there's ways to, to measure, you know, whether that's through employee surveys, whether a piece of communication is more effective. Um, you know, so what, if you're starting incorporating infographics into your meetings or into um, employee training manuals, you know, there's ways, sort of more traditional research ways to find out if that is working or not. Yeah, absolutely. Right? But I think it's definitely, it's critical. I mean, I think, otherwise you're just doing stuff, right? Yeah. Which is, you know, it's good to do stuff, but it's, uh, for the sake of it, sometimes it's, uh, you know, time is precious. So I think you want to, you want to sort of be using a, a series of tools that are working. Yeah. One of the things you, that you broke down in the book, which was really useful and I actually didn't expect it was the, the different mechanisms by which you could have an infographic created. You know, you could hire a graphic designer, you could hire an infographic sort of agency, uh, or you could DIY it, right? I mean, there are some tools out there that, that if you have some data that will kind of presto change sort of make you uh, an infographic, or you can pick from templates um, visually is, is one of them. There's others out there. What's, what's yep. your take on those? I mean, how do you feel about that sort of do-it-yourself infographic opportunity? Well, I think it's cool. I mean, I think it's, um, you know, the idea, especially the data stuff, because that's, I think, a lot harder to create. So, and there's, you know, there's design um, sort of best practices that, you know, you probably want to adhere to, especially around data. So I think some of these platforms, um, like Visually is a great one, and they're just evolving. I mean, they're just basically starting out. So, yeah, if you have data sets, you can, you, you know, you can basically... I think at this stage, a lot of them are taking data from things like your Twitter profile, Facebook, yeah. um, you know, but there's other tools out there, I think, that are evolving to the point where you can actually dump in your own data sets and have infographics created. Um, you know, as far as the variety of ways to do it, yeah, and it, I go through in the book, I go through the sort of do-it-yourself approach. If you're going to do that, some things, you know, on, um, you know, how to start thinking visually, it's not a it's not a necessarily a book that's going to show you how to draw stuff, but it, it preps you for you know the things you need to do if you want to do it yourself. And then the idea of you know hiring a student I think is a very um, you know, a viable way for people that maybe don't have the budget. And there's also sort of pitfalls to watch out for and things like that. But you know the emergence of the infographic agency, you know um, organizations like Just Three and Column Five. Uh, you know, they specialize in this medium and they help, they help with the marketing afterwards. So if you have the budget, I mean, there's these channels now that are, you know, basically designed to help you do that. So it's, yeah, it's definitely evolving. It's, I find it really interesting how over the last number of years, you know, the, the service component of it is catching up to the, you know, to the buzz. So now there's service providers, there's yeah. platforms that are helping you with that. So which leads me to sort of believe it's going to it's going to be viable. It's going to stick around. I mean, there's a big argument as to whether it's you know it's something that's basically already jumped the shark, so to speak, or it's going to you know remain viable. And I'm hoping it's the latter. Yeah, I bet I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm going to keep doing it. I don't care what anybody says. Right. I mean, for me, I just know it works. Um, you know, I'm a believer in it because a I'm not a designer. Yeah, I've been able yeah, to use this it. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, to help clients too, especially. So, I mean, you know, I, I do believe in the actual process of visual communication. Um, you know, how it's going to morph and evolve. I mean, who knows? 
Yeah, I mean, but things I think, but, things change daily, right? <laughs> yeah, they do, of course. But but you're doing it right, as we talked about. I mean, you, you are primarily using infographics to explain concepts, which uh, I think has no um, shelf life, right? That that you know, explaining complicated concepts visually um, will will always be in style. I think where we're finding a problem with infographics is a everybody jumping on the train because because they want to get a bunch of links or a bunch of tweets or whatever and it, and it sort of feeds into this whole sort of culture of shortcuts that we always embrace whether it's clout or number of facebook fans or other things that are of you know somewhat murky uh value and 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 so i think to some degree people are, are using infographics for evil rather than good you certainly are not amongst those but but i think that's the that's the challenge right is that everybody's like yeah, yeah get me one of those infographics and i don't know why or how but i need one of those and you know, but that's the same thing that's been happening to marketing for 30 years, right? Somebody has a good idea, and we immediately try and beat it into the ground until it has no more usefulness. Right, exactly. And we kill the golden goose over and over and over, and so we just make more yeah. geese, man. We just It's like a geese manufacturing plant. You know? <laughs> that's right. We're in the geese making business, exactly. That's right. That's right. Um, one of the things I really liked about the book, and... and and I wish more books had this kind of resources. At the end, you've got like actual, like here's people you should call. Here's freelancers, here's designers, here's agencies, here's here's phone numbers, you know, for people. It, it was really awesome to see that. Um, you know, I know it's difficult because you, it's hard to have a book like that and it always be current because six months from now there's different people on the scene or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, but were you always committed to sort of having that resource section or is that something that, that Q wanted you to do or how did that come about? No, it's something I sort of envisioned early on because and the, one of the biggest questions I have is like, you know, how do you get started with this? Like, yeah. And that's that's sort of the impetus for the book originally is, is just to provide a guide, a little roadmap for people, right? And part of that is the resources. So, um, you know, I use a bunch of free tools. I use some paid stuff. So I wanted to, you know, it's not necessarily, we have to sort of be careful, it's not about the technology necessarily. I mean, a lot of this stuff is around the idea and the concept. But, you know, you do need the tools to to make it real in a lot of ways and to, to bring it to life. Yeah, you're not going pencil in most cases, you know. Yeah, you're exactly. Real I mean, you yeah. could. There's sort of, you know, yeah. there's that whole sort of, uh, the, the whole doodle, doodle graphic sort yeah. of phenomenon that's coming out now too, right? Um, but, yeah, the idea of, you know, Basically, creating a you know what what software can you use? Um, B what free resources are there out there for things like clip art and and things like that? And then if you have the budget, you know there's a ton of designers out there. And again, what you said is absolutely true. You can't you know you can't list everybody. Um, and I'm sure I've left some people out. Um, you know, in, in my research, I have to eventually stop researching and actually, you know, start writing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's, I'm sure there's people, but I would, one of the biggest things I encourage, and I sort of think I, there's a little note in the book about this is check out your local market first, right? I mean, there's always a ton of talented designers if you're not going to do it yourself within your community, uh, whether that's, a, you know, through an art school or, you know, just, you know, connecting through with a graphic designer or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, I'm hoping people find value in that because it's. Uh, and I tried to make it a little bit global. Um, you know, there's sort of you know different cities, different uh, countries are sort of covered off in that. And uh, even though we're we're very much in a digital age, you don't need to be in the same city as your yeah. designer. Sure. Uh, and there's a lot of services that you know create infographics basically just you know through the exchange of digital files. Um, but uh, you know, there's a fairly comprehensive list there for people yeah. to to get them started. It's great. Are you going to go out? Uh uh, on the speaking circuit and, and start uh, giving presentations about about infographics and, and kind of the, the core of the book? Yeah, I'm doing a, a few things. I mean, I'm not doing a sort of a, a huge um, book tour, but I'm, I'm sort of starting in town here in Vancouver doing a, sort of a bunch of lunch and learns with some of the agencies in town. Um, I'm hoping, um, if anybody from Blog World is listening, I, I put a pitch in <laughs> for Blog World in January in Vegas to, uh, to sort of uh, do a session around the book. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically uh, you know looking at those opportunities as they present themselves right now. But I'm I'm definitely going to do some speaking around it. I think I'm going to participate in uh, Social Media Week here in Vancouver in September uh, with a session. Great. So uh, yeah, so as as it comes up, um, you know I'll be definitely uh, covering off the topics in the book uh, in a more sort of public format. For awesome, sure. awesome. We will look for that. Well, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, a super useful read and one that I will definitely keep around and. And, uh, and send clients to it is the power 
of infographics. We'll make sure to have links uh, to it as well. Congratulations. Really, really, uh, really happy with it. Great job. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Talk to you soon.